Who's you? Kinemagi and NA Ireland Edition accounts coming live to you with my math. Today's lesson from outer space, problem solving investigation, make a table. Central question, what strategies can be used to multiply whole numbers? That strategy will be here throughout the entire chapter. That's what we're working on today. All right, let's begin by doing the quick check questions. Find each product mentally. I want you to remember our steps. We multiply the non-zero digits. We find out how many zeros were in those factors, and then we add them into the product. Once I'm done speaking, I want you to pause the video and then come back with what answers you had. You may do this on scrap paper or whiteboard. Let me pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see how we did on our quick check. Six times four is 24. There are two zeros, 2,400. Seven times five is 35, one, two, three zeros. 300 times 200, three times two is six, and there were four zeros, so that gives us 60,000. Five times eight is 40 and there are two zeros. So now instead of having just two zeros, we have three, but that's because that first step of multiplying the non-zero digits gave us 40. So it actually had one zero in there. So you should have 4,000. And the same thing is gonna happen on number five, 2,000 times five, two times five is 10, add those three zeros, we're now in the 10 thousands. All right, let's get it a little further on. Right, crate of oranges contains 80 oranges. How many oranges are in 40 crates? Eight times four is 32, but there's one zero, 320. All right, so our planning today includes following all of the steps that we had in our last um, learn, learning opportunity for problem solving. This time we're gonna make a table. So we start with this problem here. In a recent year, about 63 out of every 100 households in the United States owned at least one pet. About how many households out of 10,000 owned at least one pet? So the first thing we need to do is how many households out of 100 own the pet? Well, I gave it away. 63 out of every 100. Sorry about that, my friends. Uh, owned at least one pet. What are we trying to find out? How many households out of 10,000? So we want to extrapolate our, that out to 10,000 households. I'm going to clear my drawings, make sure you've written that in. Anytime during this lesson that you need to slow down or pause, you're welcome to use the controls on your video to take a pause, write something in, and then go on, or even to check your work. So let's clear the drawings. All right, I need to, we're gonna make a plan. I will make a blank to solve the problem. Look back at the title of this lesson. Give me the annotation. If you say anything other than make a table, I'm gonna tell you to make a table. That's all I can do about that. We're gonna make a table to solve the problem. Write that in. Um, I'm not gonna draw a picture. They can do stuff like that because our plan this week is to develop our comfort level with making tables. And no, we're not talking mesas or kitchen tables. We're going straight up math table. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the drawings. Or dump away. All right, so let's make that table. Here's our third step. So remember our steps. We're understanding the problem. We made a plan, and now let's solve it. And I'm gonna go ahead to my annotation tool. So uh, to extend it out from 100 to 10,000, I'm gonna start by multiplying 100 by 10, which gives me 1,000. It also means over here, I'm gonna go 63 times 10, which is 630. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna multiply 1,000 by 10, I hit three zeros plus that one in the 10, so I'm gonna have a one and four zeros, 10,000. Over here, 
630 times 10 means I'm adding a zero to the end. So now I'm gonna have 6,300. So about 6,300 households out of 10,000 owned at least one pet. You'll hear me use the phrase, do to one side what you did to the other a lot during the school year, especially if we're talking about fractions. But it also applies when we're doing things like this with the tables. If, it's, if you have to multiply one side by 10 to keep that ratio correct, you're doing the same over here. Because really 63 over 100 is a fraction. And it's 60, 130 over 1,000, and then 6,300 over 10,000. Those would all be equivalent fractions. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, if you've written this in, let's go forward. You see the answer key there. And now let's check our work. What's 63 times 10? 63 times one is 63 plus two zeros, 6,300, you got this. A little too much excitement. All right. Now let's do another one together. Let's practice it. I'm gonna make it a little less for you here. Actually, I wanna get this out. All right, so we have the problem. Nestor is saving money to buy a new camping tent. Each week he doubles the amount he saved the previous week. If he saves $1 the first week, how much money will Nestor save in seven? Okay. Story problems are notorious for giving you extra information. How many of you at home care who is saving money to buy a new camping tent? Does it help you solve the math problem? The answer to both of those is probably a resounding no. Plus he's buying it for us. I'm gonna cross that out. It's not important, but what is important? Uh, doubles the amount he saved the previous week. So we know we're gonna be multiplying by. Um, saves $1 the first week. And then we also wanna know what he's gonna save in seven. So let's take the facts from up here and put them into here, into our understand. Doubles the amount. And he saved $1 the first week. So now you have this right there, straight out of the problem. Go ahead and write that in. And also, what are we going to try to find? How much he saved in seven weeks? We'll use his name. Make sure those two things are written down. Yeah, let's move forward, clear all drawings. We're gonna make a table. A plan, yeah, sorry, plan. I'm gonna tell you what we're, I already kind of previewed that. We're gonna make a table. Simple plan. I don't need you necessarily to write it out in sentence form. If you wanna say, to solve this problem, I will make a table, that's cool. But it's not uber important to what we're doing. Not at this point. All right, but we will need to solve it. So let's get back my annotation tool. So in week one, he had $1. In week two, he had $2. Week three, he had $4. Week four, he had $8. Week five, he had $16. Week six, $32. Week seven, $64. Now let's add it up. One and two is three, plus four is seven, plus eight is 15, plus six is 21, 23, 27. Put a two over here. 3, 6, 12, so 127. 
$127. I wrote it this way. You could also just put the dollar sign, but I didn't want to have to move things around. So we, I made a table. You notice I put zero, one, that's to kind of keep my place value the same. If I had put just one, two, four, eight, it had been lined up with the tens. Um, that can cause confusion later. I knew that I was going to get past single digits. So place value doesn't go away because we're in a new chapter. All right, make sure you've written that in. And let's move on. You see another form of the chart. This one went horizontally, whereas I went vertically. If you're doing it in paper and pencil, it's an easier choice. When I was doing this using my annotation tool, this would have been much more difficult. Check my answers. Is it reasonable? I could add them all up or I could round the bigger numbers to the nearest 10 and see if I'm close. And in fact, we were. All right, this one I want you guys to try and then I will talk through it. So go ahead and pause the video and attempt it. Welcome back. So let's look at this problem. Betsy is saving to buy a bird cage. She saves $1 in the first week, three in the second, third in, nine in the third week, and so on. How much money will she save in five weeks? Let's get rid of the extra info. She saves $1 the first week, $3, the second week. And if you have lots of different highlighters, you could make them different colors. One nine dollars the third week. And we want to know what she will save in five weeks. So we know, so now I have all the things that I understand. I'm gonna make a plan. My plan is to make a table. The directions told me to, so make sure you follow the directions. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that plan. Week one was $1. Week two, oops. Now we're gonna go into triple digits just in case when we're adding three. Uh, week three, $9. Week four, $81. Week seven dollars Drop the gun here. Week five, $81. Let's add it up. One plus three is four, plus nine is 13. 13 plus seven is 20, plus one is 21. I'll put my one, I will regroup a two up here. Two plus two is four, plus eight is 12. Put my regroup of one over here. My final answer is $121. Now I'm going to go ahead and let you practice a couple and I'll share the answers with you after we get past this next slide. So go ahead, do this problem, pause the video, and I'll see you when you come back. You may pause. Welcome back. So Kendall is buying, planning to buy a laptop for $1,200. Each month she doubles the amount she saved the previous month. She saves $20 the first month, and how many months will Kendall save enough to buy the laptop? And the answer was six months. We went for 20, 40, 80. Um, essentially, we did, a, we kind of aligned along with multiplying by two and then adding some zeros here, but it would have been six months. Go ahead and try this one and let's see how you did. Let me pause the video now. Welcome back. Mrs. Plant's yearly salary is $42,000 and increases $2,000 per year. Mr. Plant's yearly salary is $37,000 and increases $3,000 per year. In how many years will Mr. and Mrs. Plant make the same salary? Explain how you used a table. Well, this one's a little trickier because you're gonna have to make a chart with three lines. You have year one where they're gonna have 42 and 37. Year two, it's gonna be 44 and 40. Year three, it's gonna be 46 and 43. The next year, it's going to be the same. So five years, and that's having 
both of them on the same table. At this point, I'm going to ask you to begin on the My Homework pages. As always, if you have any areas of concern or confusion, please email me at mireland at sagechipschool.net, ask during our whole class live streams, or visit my office hours, which are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Hope you guys all have a minimal gig you got and enjoy your math learning. I'm a pee.